the lamb from your operation delivering what your customers want? Do you truly know what your customers want? Who do you think of as your customer? The auction buyer? Processor? Retailer? Food service? Consumer? All of the above? Differences in lamb carcass quality mean money to everyone in the chain. This video will follow six lambs through processing and retail cutout to demonstrate the connection between live confirmation and carcass quality and yield. Day 1. Live Lamb Discussion We asked lamb producers what, in their opinion, are the most important market lamb traits. The first thing is you have to know what market you're shipping to. I think that is probably the top thing. But for, in our case, what we're doing is shipping prime lamb, and so we're sh shipping to a, a higher end market. What we're looking for is, is youthfulness, um, condition by way of, uh, of, uh, of good conformation, good uh, meat cover, and good decent fat cover, not too thin, not too fat. So those would be my top three. An overall appearance of good health. I like to see a clear eye, good movement in the animal, overall vigor. Uh, the second would be conformation and the finish that would enhance that. that. Third uh, actually would be cleanliness of the animal, although it doesn't make that much of a factor on what's on the inside. I think it's a, it represents the pride that you've taken in raising the animal and, uh, and getting it out. To me, it's important to see an animal that's balanced between the shoulders and the hips. I like to see a squared off animal with some length to it, shorter in the leg. I don't like to see a lot of leg and uh, well finished muscling on top or cover on top of that, on top of that back. I think uh, certainly the individual lamb itself, there are important characteristics to look at, uh, um, but uh, first and foremost, what I need to see when I walk into a pen of lambs is a group of uniform animals, uh, number one, and number two, have enough animals that I can afford to ship uh, a load and uh, um, put all the, uh, put, uh, to uh, fill the load, fill the truck, and uh, ship them to market, and that's just a, a, a cost thing. Uh, I'm looking primarily, I'm looking for uh, appropriate fat cover because at the time of finishing, like we're, we're pushing to grow our lambs roughly to about 110 pounds live. Uh, and so during the growth period, you're not always trying to lay fat down. You're trying to get bone and uh, trying to put protein into the animal and get good muscle on that animal. But it, as you close into the time of shipping, we're, uh, we're now concentrating more on the finish of that product and not getting them too fat is another, uh, an, another challenge as well. So uh, to that respect, um, genetics but also uh, feeding at this point in time really plays an important role in balancing your protein and your energy out. It's about consistency, it's about age, and it's about weight. In, our, in the heavy market, in, in our case, there's three things we look for. Uh, I think Ryan alluded to the fact that you need a, a group of animals when we ship them. Uh, there needs to be, the weight needs to be targeted as well as the age of the animals is something that we, we particularly look at to make sure that they're youthful within the, the range weight of, of, of what we're looking for to send and that the group's got to be sizable enough in order to justify sending them to market. So in our case, I mean, you, you're looking at probably no more than a 10 pound live range weight between the bottom and the top end when you ship a lamb to the market. Um, and usually it's, it's surprising how close uh, in the carcass weights the animals come back um, when, when you take the live weight into account. That first of all, you have to identify the market you are trying to, to reach or target, and then you have to decide what breed it is that will fulfill that end product, and then you have to figure out uh, whether you have the infrastructure as well as the, the, uh, the feeding ability to, to get that animal to the market that you're trying to reach. I would say feed probably is 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 right there, um, not not balanced or not feeding enough. 
or overfeeding, again, with de depending on the genetics. Um, you have to have the right genetics that will take the, take the feed too. So, but my, my, I think feed would be a big, a significant issue. Feeding properly would be the right, a formulated ration for, for uh, higher rates of gain. Uh, to get these animals uh, to, uh, to get to a finished weight. And a finished weight for these type of lambs would be uh, about 110 pounds, 109, 110 pounds at the market, at, the, at where they're shipped to. So to get that, those kind of uh, gains um, in that time frame, you need to be feeding a balanced ration, higher in energy, obviously. First to be a, a good feeding program. Um, I think the animals have to grow at their potential. I'd like to see quick growth on an animal and get them out while they have a youthful look. I use a, a formulated pelleted ration. I feel that the feed companies can do a better job than I can at, uh, at mixing food. Um, forages, uh, maintaining, putting, putting the effort into growing the original forages really pays off in the feed program. The advice I would give to uh, maybe a newcomer coming into the business who uh, um, wants to ship lambs at the weight I would ship lambs at, uh, which would be a heavier lamb. I think uh, the, the, there's two real important factors. Uh, first and foremost, you've got to pick the right type of sheep to work with, uh, the right breed of sheep, and there are many breeds out there. Um, but it has to be a sheep that will produce a lamb, that will gain, that has good average daily gain, uh, and good um, capacity to reach that, that heavy weight. Um, not all breeds can do that. Uh, I think uh, from a farmer's standpoint, the perfect scenario would be to have a ewe that's prolific, high milking, um, good mother ability, and then to find those, uh, those market traits in, on, the, on the terminal sire side, on the ram side. And if you can take those two uh, entities and cross them together um, with market, um, with, with terminal traits being very um, heritable, then uh, you're going to find a lamb that, that will reach that weight and sell well. It's a multiple of, of issues that affect the product that we're producing. Uh, I think often what happens is when the market turns against you, producers try to take their product into a different market. And often what happens is that pro the, the product that they have or the animal that they have isn't suited for that product. So let's take a, a new crop lamb, for example, and we suddenly are going to turn it into a heavy lamb. Uh, often that lamb gets over fat um, and has a difficult time reaching the market weight because genetically that's not what it's meant to do. So what, the biggest challenge is that if, if you are targeting a market, you stay with the, with the program that you're in and take the highs and lows as you go along rather than jumping in and out um, in, into different markets. I look for a first clean and uh, I look to the eye for the animal is very healthy that way when we kill it, you know, it's come a really, really good animal. I also look to the shoulders, the back and then legs and the confirmation of the loins mm -hmm. and that will give you a perfect animal, you know, mm -hmm. and we're looking for from 95 to 105 pounds animals. This was a pretty perfect lamb, you know, you know, which what I was talking about, give you good confirmation and everything, you know. And uh, those are modern in which they'll give you poor product, you know, you know. And those that that lamb there, that's that's a lean lamb. It's not a really up you know, 100% lamb, I mean the perfect lamb. It will be for second cut lamb. Those three lambs here, they're good product lambs. Very good. This one should be an excellent lamb. Those three lambs I will sell maybe, like we're serving long ago, you know, supermarket, and they, they'll, I, I presume this they will buy for sure, 100%. The other one, in my sell to the, to the halal shop because they, they're looking for a second cut, you know. And sheep, you have a market where, you know, some of the, you know, like the people from Jamaica, they watch they buying for, you know, 
you know, to just chop it up, you know, for stew, you know, curing meat, you know. That's in the finish, that's what we'll be for sure for our halal stores. Because they don't want to pay the higher market value. In land, right. in a, nice for only, not only for killing, for trimming this and that, you don't have to do this, you know. It will make it better. It might cost you more, but in the long run, it maybe it'll cost you less. Well, the, fir the first thing we do when we're, when we're deciding whether or not to ship a lamb t to market is, is it's been weighed. Um, so we know that it's within because uh, wool hides a lot of problems. So the first thing we look to make sure that it's the weight that we're trying to reach. Then you feel along the back uh, to make sure that there is enough cover over the spine. You can feel on the back of the tail to make sure that uh, you're looking for fat cover on the tail, which is a good indication. You're looking at the front as well for fat cover to make sure there's good finish. And then you feel along the ribs to make sure there is, there's, there's cover on the, on the ribs as well. In, in our case, this would be an ideal lamb to send to market. I would just like to have a whole pen of them like this. You're looking at the loin, you're looking at the, 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 um, the general structure of the animal from front to back. Um, you want the squareness, you want the flatness on the, on the loin to indicate that the, the animal is, has reached its potential genetically. The, the pink, the pink reared lamb looks like it's had uh, maybe some coxie in its life. Um, he certainly is underfinished, for, and he looks probably about the same age as both animals are, just he's been compromised somewhere along this line, and um, certainly would need a little bit more time to get as much cover on him as the, the one in the purple rear end. That's the beauty of the market that we live in, is that there's a market for every animal that we produce. In this case, that there would be very little fat cover on that animal. And, um, you know, there's a certain segment of the population that is looking specifically for that type of a product when they, because that's what they're used to eating. So it's not to say that it's a good versus a bad. It is just a, an entirely different market. I mean, when you, when you feel along the ribs, you can certainly feel the ribs. Um, there's not nearly as much cover on them as uh, the, the previous lamb. The, uh, the, you, you can feel the spine very well. Along, so in other words, there's not nearly any fat cover on that. And then you can feel the, the indentations on the tails specifically. So you know that this animal certainly isn't carrying a lot of fat. These, th these two lambs here, I would say, if we look at the, the one with the purple dot on its shoulder with the more wool on it, visually from back here without putting our hands on it, it does look like it's fuller in the leg and wider in the back. That's going to be a heavier lamb. There's going to be more meat on that lamb than, than the other one. The second lamb with the, with the uh, pink or fuchsia spot on it is a good lamb as well, but d would not have nearly the, uh, I would not think, the yield because it doesn't have the weight. Um, but it is, a, it is a decent lamb, perhaps not as not as thick across the back and not as long, just not as big of a lamb. But I'd say that it's, it's still a decent lamb. First of all, we, we can go down under the brisket and feel for condition down there, feel for fat cover. And this animal does have some condition on it. Wide across the back. And we're feeling for the prominence of the transverse processes, the bones in the back, and plus the width and in, in across the back, the loin and the back. And this is, a, this is a good lamb. It's good and wide across the back, and there's good cover on it. And again, you're feeling the ribs, and we can feel, we can feel the ribs with pressure, but we know that there's going to be some finish, some condition on that lamb. Again, it's standing structurally sound, wide in the chest. Its feet are nicely placed under it, and all in all, a healthy, good-looking lamb, um, and I think that would make a, a good market lamb. So when we're feeling on this lamb, and actually I would say there is a fair bit of condition on this lamb, surprisingly, when you feel him. Not as wide across the back, not as long in the, in the loin, and th this is a nice lamb though, I would say. There is, there is quite a width in the leg. His set maybe isn't quite as good, but it's hard to tell if he won't stay still. There you go. 
But this is also, I, that makes a good lamb. On that, on that particular lamb, um, I, I would have thought that it wouldn't have had the condition on it that it did. Um, I'm saying that lamb will maybe have a bit too much, but it'll have more fat on it, more condition, more fat. Perhaps than we would like, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. But, but I did feel, um, it felt rounder and firmer and uh, generally more condition on it, like I say, than, uh, than I thought it would have. Okay, well, on first appearance, the first thing that I notice is I think these lambs have a little bit more age to them than what I would normally want to see. Uh, from appearance, the one with the green dot on the shoulder, the pink on the back, appears to be under-conditioned. The other lamb with the little longer fleece and the green dot on the back, that would be a tricky one. It looks like it's got a little bit more, it looks fuller, but it appears to have a little bit more wool. So I definitely want to get my hands on that animal to see where, where the body ends and the wool starts. Uh, I would think age would be the biggest, biggest, uh, biggest factor here. This is the one that I thought looking at it would have a fair bit of wool. Actually, the wool isn't as much as a factor as I think. Now, she's curling, he's curling his back, so it's kind of hard to, to get him on here. Yeah, he definitely doesn't have the condition that I'd want to see in him. Uh, you can feel backbone along the back. Not bad. There is some cover. He's got a little muscle to him somewhere, though. <laughs> And definitely not as much development in the back and the leg as, as, as I'd want to see. Yeah, and this lamb is, as we had seen, looking at him, definitely not enough cover. Very, very sharp on the spine. Pin, pin bones sticking, sunken sides. Um, I guess the word would be at some point he was a yeah, compromised growth somewhere along there, but he's got a fair bit of age to him as well. Definitely uh, lambs that I would see go to... Uh, Towards the market for stewing, pot meat, grinders, I would suggest. Okay, so in this group of three here, we have three very different lambs. Um, all have their own special market that they can go to, but uh, of course they, they, they differ in a, in, a, in a number of ways. Maybe we'll start from the, uh, the uh, oldest uh, lamb here. And we could even maybe call that... Not a lamb, but a sheep. Is it a male or a female? It's, a, it's, it's mutton. This is mutton. This, this, this lamb is, is clearly older than a year. It's probably closer to two. Um, it's, uh, not a lamb. it's not a lamb that would go into a prime market. Uh, there are places, however, for cull, cull sheep like that. Um, and uh, as was mentioned before, um, makes great sausage, great hamburger, great stewing meat. Uh, but it's not something, a, a type of lamb we would target for a prime market. Likewise, if we look over to this uh, lamb here, this lamb is clearly um, not uh, what I would call a finished lamb. Uh, that is to say that there, there's not a lot of um, good muscling on that lamb, number one. And number two, uh, as importantly, there's, there's little to no fat cover on that lamb. That lamb, however, does have uh, a place in the market, um, uh, preferably probably to uh, an ethnic market that is looking for that type of lamb. That's the type of lamb they grew up with. That's the type of lamb they're used to. Um, not the type of lamb that necessarily we uh, are trying to raise as prime lamb going as prime cuts into prime markets. This um, black-faced sheep here, uh, in my opinion, is, is a really nice example, a real quality example of what a finished lamb should look like. It is solid all the way through, front to back. It, uh, I haven't got my hands on it, but uh, I can tell just by looking at it that it's got some appropriate type of fat cover on it. It's the right size, it's the right height, it's not too leggy. Um, it's, it's, it's very youthful in appearance, very, uh, very vigorous looking, very bright. That's a nice looking lamb. That type of lamb would be great for specialty markets, restaurants, um, grocery chains that uh, really specialize in, in providing prime cuts of meat. This is the black faced lamb that we looked at yesterday, this is the Suffolk lamb. The one that we like the look of. If we look at it today, we'll see it's wide in the hip, 
loin and shoulders. Nice lamb. The finish on it, nice, nice cover of finish. Not too much channel fat. Very nice lamb, nice colored meat. And I'd say that lamb turned out to be what we thought it would be. It's a very good looking lamb. This lamb is the, the shorn lamb that we saw yesterday, the smaller, lighter lamb. <clears throat> and as we see, there is more condition on it. It is still a nice looking lamb, I think. Not quite as wide in the hip, not quite as wide in the, in the uh, loin and shoulder, particularly the shoulder. More fat on it, and that becomes quite evident when we open it up and look in the, at the channel fat. So lots of fat in here, but still a nice lamb. Nice thick in the leg, so I would say we knew that this lamb was going to be lighter, it will yield less, but again, a nice lamb for the right market, in my opinion. Okay, well first off, it definitely is an older animal. I believe it would be classified as, as mutton. We can tell that by, by the size, and the meat appears to be darker. Confirmation-wise, I do believe the animal is a little light in, in the legs, in the shoulder, but I am very surprised by the, by the conditioning cover on it. I, it is a little better animal than I would have anticipated when we were, when we were touching it. And even seems to appear to have adequate cover in the inside, not excessive. I would believe as a producer that this would be an animal that possibly the halal market would look for. Um, my own consumption, I think it would complement stews, curries, anything with a little bit more taste. But overall, it's not a bad, I don't believe it to be a bad carcass. It, this is definitely an, an, an older animal. Um, I can't say there's a lot that I, I like about it. The confirmation isn't there. There seems to be too much cover where it shouldn't be. The fat, and I don't know, it, 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 it tends to be it's yellow. Very, very dark meat. Uh, inside, uh, I would think that's a little excessive in, the, in kidney fat. I don't believe that this is a very good animal I'm not sure that I that it does have a market okay when we looked at these live uh, yesterday um, we noticed immediately that this lamb was unfinished and smaller in size now that we look at him as a carcass it's evident um, especially in the shoulder end of things compared to the uh, the well-finished lamb there's not near as much shoulder and there's near as much fat cover on this animal as there is what I would consider a prime lamb the um, the surprising part to me was as how much finish there is on this lamb compared to what it was when it was live. I was pleasantly surprised at the cover there was in this product here. Again, um, if you look at the inside, the kidney and the, the channel fat, um, I am surprised as how much fat there is in this carcass based on what it looked like when it was live. Um, it still will make decent, uh, a decent product to sell, but compared to the, uh, the prime lamb, obviously more cover. Um, making it that much more uh, uh, pleasant to eat. Okay, so the two lambs we're looking at here, uh, the one right here was the, was the uh, thinner, skinnier lamb uh, yesterday, and, and this was what I would call the, the best lamb in the group. Um, it's very obvious to me, if you just look at the neck alone, without even looking at the rest of it, you can see the amount of muscle and, and fat cover on the on this what I would call the prime lamb versus uh, the, the the skinny lamb that that tells it all right there. But when you follow up um, on this on this skinnier lamb, I can see without even touching it this the, the ridge the backbone and 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 I can tell between this lamb and this lamb that this lamb doesn't have near the uh, near the the muscle that this lamb has near uh, uh, near the uh, weight the overall weight when you look inside and compare this lamb to this lamb you can see the fat difference on the inside and 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 this is this is this is a really nice looking lamb on the inside I am quite surprised though, I will say I'm surprised that there's any fat on this lamb because when I saw it live, I didn't think you'd see any on the back at all. So that to me is a bit of a surprise. Okay, so this, this lamb here, is, in my opinion, isn't a lamb, it's a sheep. This is, uh, this is the mutton. This is the older uh, animal that we uh, were looking at yesterday comparing to those two carcasses. Um, again, um, 
I'm surprised that there's uh, um, the amount of fat that I see on this surprises me because when I was looking at it live, it did not look um, like it had any flesh on it. Having said that, if you put your hand on this carcass, run your hand down, you can see the backbone, you can feel the backbone, and there's, there's quite an indent in here, all the way down on both sides of that backbone, which tells me when you peel that fat back, you're not gonna get near the muscle that you would have on that prime lamb, and, um, and, and the yields just won't be there. As well, the, uh, the, the color of this so-called lamb is, is much darker and not as appealing to me and maybe to the markets that I'm looking for um, as, as, the, as the prime lamb we looked at over there. My market is a halal market. They like this lamb because it, they don't have too much fat on it because we like to less fat. That's why I like to my halal market, all this lamb for the lean stuff. They don't have a fat onion and the good stuff. That's, that's all they like, the halal. Now, the color meat, because the little bit is uh, dark, right? Because it's, uh, when, when you cook this stuff, it's a little bit tough. Because the lean stuff, they take a little bit of time because we like it, all the halal market, right? And also this, they have a little bit of cover. We can use like, when the, this piece is, this lamb make it like a curry, right? And this is lean. And this lamb, they have a little bit of cover. We can make the barbecue steaks. That's why we like this. I like this stuff for the my halal community. This is a little bit of fat because they like to mostly the white stores, right? For the halal market, doesn't like them too much fat. We can like this lamb. We like to. Uh, Give it to Langos, Alam Farms, that's product, they like it. Okay, this, this lamb, the difference that that lamb, because this one, they have too much fat on it, because when we break this lamb, we're gonna waste this lot of fat. We're gonna lose a lot of weight with this lamb, right? When we're gonna lose a lot of weight, they're gonna lose the money. Better than this lamb, we're gonna like that lamb. That's all. And this lamb, little bit, is gonna be dark. It's a little bit dark, but that lamb is a pink. Okay, so these lambs here for our market and our needs really don't suit my requirements uh, due to the, the size, color, um, and basically the, our markets don't, we don't have a market for them, really. It's way too big for us. Um, this one here, the, the just um, the fat cover, there's, I mean, there's barely any meat on it. Uh, this one has way too much fat for me, and. Um, you know, way too dark on the inside and the legs. This one, the inside is a nice color. Uh, the legs are a nice color. Just the fat and its overall size doesn't, doesn't fit our need. First off, I like the color that I first see. The color on external and internal color is, 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 is there. Uh, this one here, uh, it's a little too underweight for us. But we do have an application for it. We do have a need, a requirement on, as a customer uh, at, for portions, the loin portion, shoulder portion. So we wouldn't refuse this lamb, but we would, you know, we would use it for that source. And it's a retail chops for barbecuing. It's not ideal for that. Um, this one here, beautiful color. Uh, this is the, you know. The number, this one here and this one here is ideal for our need on color, um, size, the fat, the saddle's covered up nice and neat, nice there. Um, and for barbecuing, is the perfect sizes. If I had to choose one of the three carcasses for, for our need, ideally, ideal lamb, um, it's very difficult because one and three are really similar. But looking at the fat cover and yield loss, I would have to, you know, I would probably, I like the color of number one. I like the actual amount of fat cover that I won't lose on number three though. Um, so it's a pretty, I would probably go with uh, number one.
Uh, we receive our lamb uh, primarily, most part, all in primals, uh, broken down just like beef would come short loins in a box. We buy saddles. Uh, we buy the racks, come in Frenched in a box, shoulders, we get, this is, this is what our spec would be, which is a square cut lamb shoulder and a semi bonus lamb leg. And they're all lamb legs in one box, shoulders in another box, saddles, and we do that primarily uh, for the base on the needs of the business at our stores. Uh, some stores do very well with racks and saddles and they suffer on the shoulders so they don't need to buy the shoulders. Whole carcasses are mainly purchased. We have certain markets that utilize the whole carcass, and they do that weekly. Uh, but most of the, the, the is during Christmas, Easter, uh, Thanksgiving. We bring in whole carcasses. We do a, a, a combination tray. It's called a lamb combo pack. And it's basically a little bit of everything on what you see on the table in this one retail tray. So a little bit of lamb chop, loin chops, a little bit of rack, stew shank, leg, and shoulder, and customer can just, doesn't need to buy a half a lamb or whole lamb, they can just buy a portion at a retail, you know, between 30 and 40 dollars worth of lamb, and that's it, and, the, and they're ready. Um, some of the pot is right now on the shoulder, um, there's not much fat that I'm going to have to remove from it, so that's, that's better for me. Uh, the stamps are all, always come off um, on, at retail. Um, the saddle, there's a little bit of fat I'm going to have to trim off, but it, 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 it's you know, the perfect amount. Um, the leg is usually always has the most uh, waist with the shoulder, but that all gets chimed down. Everything comes off. At the end of the day, on retail, it's all about presentation. We we sell. We don't have uh, self serve cases. We have self We have self serve cases. So it's all about presentation on that tray. And once I start chopping it up, and I'll show how what I mean by that. So as for our uh, retail level, in display we would uh, remove all the, the, the excess fat off the saddle. Take it to the saw, split it in half. We leave a bit of a tail, we don't leave the full flank on the loin. And at our, within our uh, standards, we, we uh, knife our saddles. Um, the less meat needs to get onto that saw, which causes the heat and the friction, and that'll take away shelf life from the product. So we, we knife our loins. Take it to the saw. Then we go through every individual chop and we do a little bit of trimming, leaving partial of the tail. Our standards is what you see on the bottom is what you see on what you see on the top is what you see on the bottom as well. We don't hide anything underneath. Shelf life. Uh, is, is huge at store level. We have we only keep our meat in the counter uh, five days. We we remove the product two days before the expiry date, best before date. Um, as for for wastage, there's a level of uh, the way we operate. On, there's a cost of doing business on our side. Uh, there's a level that those counters need to look at to make it attractive for customers to purchase our meat. Uh, and and part of the waste always comes in with uh, yield losses. Another one. Um, we have certain yield percentages that we that, that are calculated in the formula for for every cut. Actually, every cut has its own calculation to that. Our, our retails are calculated based on demand on products. Racks are really high in demand. Uh, the the restaurant markets are huge, um, and that drives a huge uh, factor in the cost. Uh, our racks are always Frenched, so that's loss on the flank. So that has to be made up there as well. Um, Supply and demand is seasonal is another huge uh, that right the, the volume of lamb that goes through is is tremendous so that calculates into the factor. Uh, lamb is also used at retail as a driving front page driving. Uh, aggressive ads are, are are huge at Easter Christmas um, for for the lamb market. Um, and most of it is just consumer demand. Uh, the, you know, the most popular parts of the loin and the rack. Uh, ideally, barbecue items is the shoulders a little bit more fat. There's a lot of flavor in that shoulder. 
uh, leg. Leg is pretty lean and uh, does very well on the barbecue as well. Um, and those are, and actually one thing that also is supply and demand that drives uh, re on our end on retail is uh, Food Network. Uh, every time they post, they do cooking recipes, they do things, we find uh, an increase on those specific items. So in Shanks, they're doing all these huge things with Shanks, we get a high demand on Shanks as well, which drives the cost up because there's only so many and retails go up as well. Supply and demand sometimes is just not enough of it. Yeah, so this, this, this actual lamb looking at the saddles right now um, is a little dark for, my, for our needs in, in our market. Uh, unfortunately, the size is perfect. Color on the rail look great, but now that I, as I start trimming away, you start noticing the leg has a dark, some dark on it there. The, the saddle is a little way, a little too dark. Uh, on 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 the lamb, customers really really like is is the lighter pinkish color to it, um, and unfortunately, it, it unfortunately it's not there on this one. <laughs> Uh, some of the reasons why this is possibly why the color it is it was uh, it was killed yesterday the animal um, so it didn't get quite as much time in the cooler to uh, cool down and, and settle so that's possibly one reason why that happened so some of the other elements that may cause some dark cutters uh, are, is the feed lack of water stress and age of the animal Because the mutton, the difference with the, with the lamb and the mutton, because they have a smell. It's a strong smell and it's a tough meat too. And plus, his meat is a little dark, it's old, because when they get meat old, they go more tough. My halal market, they're looking for the lamb. It's a lean lamb, you don't have a, too much fat. That's all they like, my halal market. This the French rack. I'm gonna make a French. Off. This is the lamb saddle, sheep. See the difference for the lamb and the sheep, the color. Okay, so we have some uh, grilled lamb loin chops here uh, from the premium cut of the lamb that we just uh, we did previously. There's no strong odor to it? No. No. Tastes like lamb? Yeah. That's tender? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good flavor. Yeah, good flavor. Yeah, very good, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's very good. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, as an expectation uh, after a cooked product, th this is this is very good. People usually that buy lamb know what they want and know, and visually, really, it's visual. You know, yeah, it's, not, it's not like beef. You know, beef is you know prime grade marble, and you look for the more marble in, that, in lamb. Its color is the is is one of the factors on our side. So then how do we address the issue then of the color? That's our thing, you know, it's, it, with, that we've identified, isn't it? Because we've gone through all the work, we've done everything. The color was wrong, the taste was right, everything else is done right. Everything else is right. Except for the color, and not even all of the color, the color of part of the carcass. Partial carcass, correct. Right. You're right. And unfortunately, it's the it's, it's the, the most expensive cut that right. is affected by this decision making process. The most expensive piece, yes. The rack and the loin, the saddle, which is the loin chops. The rack, you get the rack, rib chops, French racks. We can eliminate age. We can eliminate feed. Yeah. We can really uh, the water factor. I mean, they had water. Yeah. Um, before the so within before four hours of of, of trucking, yeah. that slaughter. But it, to me, I thought I think it's the it's the time that they arrived, and then they were quickly we handled them, and then they, yeah, uh, and so it's the process probably yeah. right, like the process to the actual to the end of the line. <clears throat> so here we have uh, the the older lamb, the mutton lamb uh, loin chops sheep. or sheep. Um, off the bat, I, I can sense a little bit stronger order to it. That's personal, like it's tougher. Yeah. Right. Did you? Stronger. Stronger. Yeah, it's greasy. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it? Is it gre greasier? Yeah. Um, Is it tough? It's tough. Oh, yeah. Aside from the toughness, though, it's um, it's not that bad. Like, I, I, I'm enjoying it. Someone that, that eats lamb kind of knows what they're expecting right off the bat, like right from when they open the package. Um, they'd be very disappointed. Because because what they're accustomed to, what they're used to eating, yeah. The texture is what I think is really it's yeah. mm -hmm. you're, you're you're pulling on this, yeah. Right? Yeah. Now, what about if this was someone who is not a typical lamb eater? This is the first time they've tried lamb. I don't think they would. Not the customer. Yeah, we just. Uh, I don't think they buy it again. But to me, it's. Uh, like we talked about all through this, that there's markets for everything, so people know what they're getting. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing wrong with the, the mutton. If you know that you're getting mutton, then you're paying for mutton. Well, learning for me today was uh, don't judge a book by its cover. So the lamb that I thought would have came out exactly what I wanted, partially did not. The thing that surprised me the most is when we, when we actually did the live lamb grading, if that, that's, if that's what we want to call it, and then saw the carcasses hanging, how Different. They looked live, and then when they were hanging, a lot of a lot of things disappeared, and it became more difficult for me, anyways, to decide which was a prime lamb and which was not. If we had not identified those carcasses uh, at the live stage, I think all of us would have been challenged. Yes, certainly the the, the thinner halal style lamb and the sheep. Yes, those were obvious. Take the other three, kind of, and I think even Joe admitted that. Looking at those three, you know, they all are. Okay, right? They all meet uh, the requirements that we're looking for. So that was really shocking to me. Uh, I learned from my try to introduce to what we like a lot of community and what we put out, uh, provide to Longos and uh, all the white stores. Mm -hmm. That's where I learned and I show them and this stuff because I deal with the halal all the community. That's what they like. They need stuff. The less bad. I suppose what I learned most from the exercise of the last two days is uh, well, a couple of lessons. First of all, I'm disappointed in, uh, in the fact that, that, that the prime lamb cut dark in, partial, in parts of it, and we're, we're trying to address that situation because all the way through the process, there's been so much effort and, and uh, so much hope put on that lamb, and everybody thought that was the best one. Look great, cuts are good, everything's perfect. But the color is off in part of the, of the meat. So is that just an issue because it was killed so quickly after it arrived? Or is there some other outstanding issue? But then what I learn as a producer is that that is significant to the, to the retailers, to the processors and the retailers, because when those things happen, 
that can be waste for them or it can be maybe not waste but a product that's not going to end up in the market that it intended. And certainly the whole aspect of waste, not waste but trim and, and effort and time that it takes. Uh, you know, as producers sometimes you think you put the lion's share of the effort into it. We do put a lot of effort in but I think everyone else does as well and so you get to appreciate the uh, why, why, why the cost of the, re the retail cuts are what they are. Though I think I know what a good product is leaving my farm, I was it was very interesting to see the variables along the line, uh, starting right from what you saw from your eye to when you put your hand on it and right through processing. And I think if there was anything to be learned out of this, it's how important it is for industry leaders in this in this industry to, to put producers with processors, with customers, and make sure we're in line with what, what we're producing and what they want. I found the last two days really a big eye-opener for me because uh, I haven't seen this side of, uh, of land production and uh, it really became apparent to me how important it is at the farm level to pay attention to detail and by detail I mean um, uh, the, 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 uh, putting your hands on those animals, feeling and not just having a look at them and saying, well, they're, you know, they're 55 kilos, so it's time for it to go. Because when, when you see them hanging on the rail, I mean, that's like the, 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 the book has been opened. And, and now you're, you're really looking at them. But what, what I found really interesting, um, there were two things in particular. One, that, uh, that we had this darker meat coming out of a lamb that was on farm treated with care. Uh, it had the right... It had water, it had feed, it wasn't stressed out, and yet uh, when we broke it open, um, it wasn't dark and it wasn't light, it was both. And uh, so why is that? Well, I, I, you know, I, I found that interesting. Uh, finally, I would say um, what shocks me is the amount of reduction in weight from uh, a hanging carcass to the final product in the store. And that speaks volumes to me as to why the price of lamb is higher than other, um, other proteins. Um, take home message. We do a lot of work on the farm and it's all for naught if that lamb is a dark cutter. Cut the uh, um, the, the uh, grocery store doesn't want it, and most importantly, the customer doesn't want it. So uh, again, it's an attention to detail, uh, keeping your lambs stress-free, feeding them well. Well, I think um, what, one of the take-home messages out of all this was that, that the variability in the carcasses that we're producing are definitely directed to different markets, and we have to be aware of the markets we are targeting our product to reach. And, and get good at doing that part of our job so that we're not trying to jump into different markets for different reasons. So the, I, I think one, one of the great messages of the last two days, a huge take home message is the communication, is us as producers getting together with the processors and the retailers and following the product and having a look and see what happens in the different stages and how much we can all learn from one another. Um, it's, the last two days have been hugely valuable for that and I hope we can continue this type of conversation where we all learn and get to understand one another's positions. Um, I guess on, on our side, uh, uh, learning to take home, um, you know, we, on, in my environment, we talk about pride, passion, and, and, and dedication. I think there's a lot of that here in this room. And, uh, and like everyone's saying here, sticking together, trying to get the, to, that, <laughs> to the goal together would help everyone in the end. Um, not just one or, or you know, two parties, but everybody. And at the end of the day, the customer, um, is, is my boss <laughs> and they tell us what they want so we just got to figure a way how to deliver it. Well on a personal level in my, when we've done certain projects throughout the years I um, started going out to producers and understanding them um, working you know with, with Nick, with Joe, with, with the halal market, with the premium market with everybody. I noticed that Everyone was working hard, really hard. And there were some obvious things that could help if we all understood what everybody does. So really, who puts the money in, into our sector? 
the customer. The rest of us all move the money around. But really the revenue source is the customer. To the retailer, to us, to you. And that's who we've got to please.